right, guys. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Uh, today we're just going to do a just a real simple uh, bless you. That's one of our old English bulldogs. That's Shug. We have three of them. Three or four? Three or four. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Today we're just doing a little front porch uh, session uh, here at our log cabin home. If you haven't seen how we built our log cabin home debt free, you'll, you'll definitely want to do that. Um, we're just going to sit talk to you guys a little bit about what our goals were uh, going into being off grid. Um, you know, living off grid is not for everybody. Um, I think you have to have the right mindset. Uh, to actually live off grid. Um, I have been seeing a lot of people on YouTube that, you know, put in $50,000 solar systems and they, you know, they, they really didn't wean themselves off of anything. They're still living a very complicated life. Uh, we wanted to live off grid to help us simplify our life. And uh, it's worked. Uh, we've been uh, off grid for two years now. Uh, here at our home, we have five children, uh, two adults and five children, and uh, we all work here together doing stuff around the house. Uh, I do work at, at uh, others. I do have a job and stuff that I do, but uh, we, uh, we all work together here at the house. Um, we want to raise our children uh, to know the value of work. Uh, you know, like when we go out and cut wood, uh, we work at that as a family. You know, so um, I think it's weaned us off of television a lot. Uh, we do have a television in our home. Uh, it's a 12 volt uh, television that uh, like goes in an RV. It has a built-in DVD player, and um, you know we we can watch movies if we want to. But a lot of times uh, we are outside, and uh, aren't we? We love yeah. being outside. Where we'd rather really. be. We'd rather be out. The way we look at it, you need to go back to like Native American times. You know, you need to go back not a hundred and, you know, fifty years, but maybe. We try to live real simple here, don't we? We're yeah. always striving to make our life simple. Yeah, and I feel like knowledge is real important. Knowing how to do stuff. Yeah. Um, understanding our surroundings and how to utilize it um, yeah. for us. Yeah. You know, uh, we all work together around here. We live in a very rural area. We actually butt up against a wilderness area here on our property. And uh, so we have just, what, maybe three or four uh, distant neighbors, I guess you would call yeah. them, that are several there miles away. Yeah. But, you know, we call each other up, say, hey, are you going to town? If you are, can you pick this up Check for me? Check on each other. Check on each other during snows. Like, I mean, this last winter we had a 10 inch snow, which is pretty, pretty severe for us around here. And we went and checked on all the neighbors with our UTVs and actually uh, took neighbors to town and things like that. You know, so you, you need to work together, you know, and we don't do the typical homestead thing. We uh, do wild edibles. Uh, we fish a lot. We're getting more and more into hunting. I was, um, I, I raised, I was raised hunting uh, and just really got away from it just because of the busyness of life. But I want my sons to regain that knowledge, uh, and um, so we're we're doing more and more hunting and things like that. Uh, you make a lot of your own jellies and things yeah. like that. And uh, but you know it's um, people need to think that you know like if you live in an area like where, where we live uh, in the Ozarks, uh, we get a lot of rain. You know, we do water catchment here. We don't even have a well. And, uh, you know, most people think when you do water catchment, you do a 55 gallon barrel. No, you do thousands of gallons of storage and that gets you through those dry months. But here in the Ozarks of Arkansas, we are blessed with a lot of wild edibles, uh, lots of different kinds of mushrooms. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have prickly pear cactus around here. We eat that. You know, so I would encourage folks to, you know, maybe, I mean, chickens and goats and rabbits are okay, but you have to think a little more practical than that. You know, like uh, even hogs, we have wild hogs around here. So, uh, you know, that's something we want to get into, but, you know, uh, hogs are something that's very, um, 
useful uh, during hard times. My grandfather actually was uh, raised through the depression and uh, you know they, they rendered the lard from the hogs uh, they you know they smoked their own meats now we have we've raised our own hogs haven't yeah, we we've and slaughtered we've slaughtered our, our own hogs yeah. and we've sugar cured our own meat and stuff and it's very rewarding to get the whole family in on something like that but you know like like rabbits you know I mean rabbits are good I mean they're they're really good meat but uh, you have to think okay well what's gonna happen if I can't get to town right you know feeding the rabbits taking care of the rabbits taking care of the rabbits and things where you can hunt and fish and, and so in our videos you might see us foraging and hunting and eating some things you're gonna be like yeah I don't know but we'll yeah. see how you guys like it yeah the videos and, um, <laughs> yeah you know and we, we don't do things like traditional families do we we actually try to think outside the box a lot of times uh, you know, like even inner bark, you can eat a lot of inner bark. Yeah, uh, there's things you can do with you that. Know, and uh, my wife, April, she's really into that, more of that than me. What kind of got me thinking about edibles, wild edibles, is uh, when I was a, a, a park ranger, I was an interpretive park ranger for the National Park Service, um, there was co-workers of mine that every Sunday they would uh, all year round, every Sunday, they would never eat anything from the table. They went out and they foraged everything that they ate uh, that day, you know, so, and they did that year round. So it can be done. It can be, and the Native Americans only worked an average of just a few hours a, few a, day. Hours a day. Yeah, That's and, all they had to do you know, to provide. And different climates are different. I mean, if you live in a harsh environment, that's one of the reasons we chose just to stay here in the Ozarks and not move to the Rocky Mountains or, you know, somewhere like that. Uh, because here, our summers are mi pretty mild. Our, our winters are pretty mild. I mean, we usually have about three months of, of each season, you know, three months of hot. Uh, what we do is when it gets really hot in the house is because uh, you know we're off grid um, and we can turn on the generator and run uh, an AC unit but a lot of times what we do is we go down to the creek we have a lot of spring fed creeks around here and we go swimming during the hottest part of the day there's actually a lot of old mines over here in this area and we can actually sit at the entrance of caves or mines and there's cold air um, Anything else you want to say? No, I would say um, before you go off grid, definitely try to practice being conservative about your resources. Um, that way you're kind of conditioned for it. Um, what's the one thing that you would say is a definitely a have to thing for living off grid? A mindset. A mindset. Yeah, yeah, once the mindset is there, you know, you, you have to you have to have a vision, you know, and uh, I think, um, you know, any good idea starts out with just, you know, just a vision or, or any any good thing in your life starts out as a vision or an idea. And, uh, you know, once that's in place, just make it happen for you. You know, we could live off very little money here since we're debt free now. And uh, like some of my other videos, uh, you know, we don't use charcoal, we don't use a lot of propane, we cook a lot outside, every chance we get we cook outside, and, and all that saves money, doesn't it? Yes, it saves money. So, uh, alright guys, if you've got any questions or anything like that, just ask that in the comments and we'll, we try to answer every question. Yes, yeah, so uh, we yeah, we're Certainly. still a work in progress. We're a work in progress. Uh, we're always trying to better everything we do yes. around here, so yes. um, and, for uh, sure. You know, so just, you know, and each is his own. You know, try to remember that too, yeah. you know. We, but uh, like and subscribe yes. and join us on this journey. And uh, we're excited about sharing all of our ideas and maybe learning some of your ideas. Yep, a lot of these ideas we stole from other YouTubers. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, we're not original at everything, that's no, for sure. No, so. YouTube has helped us out a lot and hopefully something that we're telling you will help you out a lot. So, but anyway, thank you guys uh, so much for tuning in today. Chester. And April. Yeah. <laughs>